everybody and welcome to another episode and the start of another season in our FM19 Journeyman where we are still in charge of Troys but now at a new height, at a new peak in our footballing career we are now in the Liga 1, the top tier of French football and a top 5 league in the world and to be honest I think we can be pretty pretty happy with how quickly we've got to this point we've only been managing what 7 or 8 years? We're doing pretty well. I really don't think we can slate ourselves for it, but we do now have a lot to prove, to prove that we deserve to be in this level of football because it is a lot higher than anything we've done before. It's a top five league in the world. It is absolutely massive. And we really do need to assert that we are good enough for this, that this is where we belong. And not only that, that we can go higher than this, that we are ready for this. And I think it's going to be a really tough season. I mean, it's a very high level of football. And just remember, when we took over Troyes, what, a year and a half ago? They were in the relegation zone in the Liga 2. And in that amount of time, in 18 months, give or take, we've got them promoted. Like, that's such a huge step up in such a short space of time. It's always going to be a difficult season. But I do think we've got what it takes. But before we get into that, I'm going to run through the team, obviously any changes, but also a bit of just an overview of how the club's doing at the minute and also how we're doing because we've not checked up on us for a while, really, since we got all of our coaching badges, we stopped sort of going to this screen. So I figured I figured we'd give it a bit of an overview. So we're currently 30 years old, seven years older than me in real life, and the time in this game has absolutely flown. I'm just going to say that one right now, but... The main thing to draw ourselves to is the reputation, almost at three stars, it's at 55%. And that is, is grown really fast, to be honest. I remember when we were just a teeny little bit of star here when we've taken over Barrick and... Well, we've, we've come quite a long way and I think we can be quite happy with that. But also, our characteristics have also changed quite a bit, obviously. I think the last time we came to this screen, our media handling was all the way down at 1%. And now it's all the way up at 100. It couldn't be any higher after going from, well, not being able to go any lower. So, yeah, we've turned that one around quite nicely. A couple of others here, which we can be quite proud of, I think. Sort of like the hands-on approach, managing finances, team discipline. Uh, all things that are obviously very, very good to have. And also a couple of our attributes down here. Uh, man management and motivating, especially 18 and 16. It's a very good spot to have. And then there's a few here which are sort of over the 10 mark. Which, considering we've got no past playing experience... Not too bad. And obviously, one of the big things to talk about with that last trophy win, we have now got three pieces of silverware. Obviously, the Swedish fourth tier, Finnish second tier, and the big one, the French Liga 2. Our biggest, our biggest title so far. And, well, I think we can be extremely happy with that. We took them from a relegation candidate to, to a title-winning side within 18 months. It's absolutely mad. And, well, there's a couple of other things on here, but there's a couple of screens I can't go to because it does spoil things. And there's a couple of things that sort of I just don't really care about. Like, who are these people? Who who are you? I don't know why I care about my relation. I don't know who they are. Um, but, well, we've got a couple of languages which we're fluent in now, English and Swedish. And then we're pretty good at French as well, apparently, which is kind of nice, actually. We still avoid talking to the press, despite having 100% media handling. Okay, something tells me that isn't quite up to date, but well, let's just let's crack on to what's important, shall we? Let's crack on with the teams, the ins and the outs. So the majority of the outs that we had were actually releases. We barely sold anybody for any money at all. And yeah, the majority of players who did leave the club did so either on a free transfer because we didn't want to re-sign them or because they didn't want to sign a new contract, as is the case with by far the biggest name on this list, Gregory Berger, which is... A massive shame. He's now at Hamburg, valued at 4.4 million on 20k a week. It's fairly apparent to see why why he wanted to leave. There is absolutely no way we could have paid him that much money. But to lose a player of that much value and who was that good for us is a massive shame. I mean, he was huge for us last season. 12 goals and 8 assists. Played nearly every game and came out with a 7.16 average rating in the league. Absolutely massive player for us. And it's, it's a huge shame we couldn't keep hold of him, to be honest. But... Well, he didn't want to stay, he just, he, he had a better opportunity, and to be honest, we can't really blame him. Playing for Hamburg in the Bundesliga is a fair step up, I think it's safe to say. I assume they're in the Bundesliga, yeah, they are. And, well, he took a step up, and, well, there's not a lot, we can't really be mad at him for that, we just couldn't offer him what he was being offered elsewhere, which is, it's a shame, it's, it's hard to take, but we have lost Gregory Berger. Couple of other names on this note, obviously Gargo de Etheria is probably the next one that jumps out, um... Very good player for us, but he wanted a first team contract and he wanted about 8k a week. And neither of those were things I was really willing to do. Like, he was good, but he wasn't that good. He wasn't really warranting that. 
So we let him go, unfortunately. Um, it was it was a shame. I quite liked him, but he was quite flexible in the middle, which is what I really liked. But I just could not justify that at all in the slightest. So yeah, Golgo de Lothario is gone, and it's a shame because he was a good player for us. A couple of other names on here which stand out. Uh, Alexis Flips was a decent winger, but he never really found a spot at the club. He wasn't good enough really last season, so... I certainly wasn't going to bring him to the next step up. Uh, a couple of goalkeepers, Ronan Jay and Ivan Marino, were sort of backups. And, well, I just... Why? We just don't need them anymore. Just, they wanted more money and I could get players for cheaper. So, what's the point? Uh, David Chevalier was a pretty decent player. Um, decent young striker, but we've got a lot of decent young strikers. We didn't need more decent young strikers. So, he went... Again, he wanted quite a bit of money and just, no, we, there was no need. And Hamza Chahid is probably the other one who I loaned out last season and said, oh, he might be our starting right back this season. And, well, he's not going to be. He's just, he's not good enough. And he wasn't really that good last season out alone at Le Mans. So he only played 18 times and got a 6.72 average rating, which, you know, just isn't great. If he's not impressing enough to start for Le Mans, he's not starting for us in Liga 1. So, well, that is all of the outs. There's a couple of others on here, but I don't think any of them are really players who ever featured for us at all. So... Well, that is the outs, so let's get on to the ins. So before we do get on to the players we've brought in, let's start with the last out, and Hamza Boujama is that player. He went for 23.5k. He was just in our reserves. We didn't need him anymore. So we let someone take him off us. SAS Epinal take, took him off us for, well, just a little bit of money. It's not a massive amount, but, you know, at least now we can go and play football. But with that out of the way, let's get on to the ins, starting with the players who were bought in by our director of football, who we'll just flick through here. None of them are outstanding, a couple of them look a little bit decent, but they're, they were all bought in on free transfers, and they're all worth probably an average of around 40k. Um, so, who knows, maybe they'll develop a little bit, because they're all quite young as well, so we might be able to get a little bit of money for them. This guy here looks absolutely rubbish, and I don't know why he was bought in, it seems very odd, but... Um, well, yeah, we might be able to get a little bit of cash for him. They're obviously bought in on free, so they haven't cost us anything, so it's not too bad. At least he's done a decent job there, but... Well, let's get on to the players who will actually be featuring for us in our first team this season, at least hopefully. So, starting with that, Derek Assay, a left inside forward. So, this kind of reveals the system we're going with a little bit, but he looks pretty good, to be honest. He looks very good all around, and last season he played for US Orleans, who finished 16th and managed to get 10 goals and 7 assists with 5 Man of the Match performances. Obviously, US Orleans weren't a great side, so to be putting up those numbers with a relatively poor team is quite impressive, and I'm really hoping that we can... Well, bring even better stuff out of him. Even though it is a step up in leagues, hopefully we can... Well, we can do quite a bit for him because he looks like he's got a lot a lot going on for him as a player. And he's quite experienced too, which is something I was really looking for. Um, we signed him for 800k up front, potentially rising to a million. And, well, he's worth 2 million already. So, it's a good sign all around, really. It's, I'm quite happy with that signing, if I'm going to be honest. But... The next one, well, to me, this is even better. This is Zacharias Antonio, a centre-half who, to me, looks outstanding. He looks really, really good. Um, the, the key points where it really matters is where he shines. He hasn't got much going from outside of that. And there's a couple of things which could do with being a little bit higher, maybe. Things like jumping reach and tackling. But he does still have room to improve. He's only 24. And, well, he looks like a really good player. And we signed him for around 625k. He's currently worth a million and a half, so... Decent bit of business there. We bought him in from Anderlecht, who are a pretty good side. So he was really struggling to get game time there. I'm hoping that with us in the Liga run, he can, well, he can get some stuff under us and hopefully play to the levels, which I'm sort of expecting of him. Now, he's probably going to be starting with Follett for most of the season, but towards the end, I may try and fade Follett out because he is obviously getting on a little bit in years and maybe just try and bring in Ponte and try and make that quite a stable centre-half pairing. Uh, that's sort of the idea, but who knows how it will actually turn out. But the next player on the list is Fatih, Fatiu Musasa. I, I don't know how to say his name. I'll figure that one out before we play a game with him. But he's just a, a different option. Whereas um, Asay was a inside forward on the left-hand side, this is a winger. And that's kind of what I've tried to do. We've still got Abuemo and Gransar at the club who are going to be playing on the right for us. And Abuemo is an inside forward, Gransar as a winger. And that gives us options. It gives us... We can change our tactics based on who we're against and how we're playing and what's working. And I think that's really important to have when we're not probably going to measure up to a lot of these teams in terms of quality of players. I mean, if we're playing, I don't know, random team PSG, we're obviously not going to be able to just put out a similar team to them and compete. We need to be able to change what we're doing and try and get an edge that way. And I feel like having options in the style that we can play is going to be really important to that. 
And he looks like a pretty decent player too. He's very experienced, 28 years old. We bought him in for just over 150, or well, exactly 115k from Angers, who obviously were a good side who underperformed last season. So I really am hoping that, well, we can we can use him to his fullest, really, and hopefully get a good bit out of him when we do need him. So, next player, Sandro Mourinho, who is a attacking midfielder. Now, he is going to be a backup to Marietti, but we did need someone sort of to replace Gregory Berger, but not really because he's not going to be starting. However, he does look like quite a good player. I just felt that Thomas Eriksson, as much as I love him, is not a good enough backup for Liga 1, I'm afraid. So... First choice backup is Sandro Mourinho, but he does have quite a bit of potential and does himself look like a very good player. So if we have any issues with Marietti, we can bring this guy in. He's a little bit less sort of physical in the strength and height and jumping reach departments. But in terms of his actual playmaking, he maybe looks a little bit better. So I certainly wouldn't be surprised to see him feature at least fairly heavily this season. He looks like a good player and I'm quite happy with that signing, especially for only 185k. I mean, for a 23-year-old attacking midfielder, that's not bad business. And then this guy, Luca Paramentia, who you may have wondered why didn't I go over him when we went over the other three players, because I bought him in myself. And he looks great. He's a Segundo Volante because I'm a little bit worried about Derek Asede. He's getting quite old. And he's one of the weaker players in the side. Not that that's really a knock. We were quite strong last season in general. But if anyone was to underperform, I'm kind of expecting it to be him. So I bought in Luca Paramen pa Parmentia. Luca Parmentia. He just looks really good. You know, he's 23 years old, so he's sort of approaching his prime, but he's certainly got room to improve yet. Physically excellent, decent mentals, and some good technicals where it matters. Uh, struggles to score, similar sort of to Asede, I guess, but very good player, to be honest. A good Segundo Volante, bought in on a free, valued at 2 million, so you can't really fault it. The worst we'll do is make a massive profit. So, the final player is just a backup goalkeeper, Powell Sokol. Or Pavel Sokol, I guess. I don't I don't know how W's work in Polish. But yeah, Polish goalkeeper looks pretty decent. He's just a, he's a backup goalkeeper. There's not, not too much to say, really. So that leaves our team lining up like this. Now, um, a couple of these players may not feature. Actually, Follett would start the first game instead of Ponte. He's just suspended for it. But yeah, this will probably be how we shape up for the majority of the season. And, well, at least this is what I'm expecting. But it could very much change. Uh, a couple of things that I am sort of planning to swap around. Navarro is going to probably rotate quite heavily, along with Parmentia. Um, Asede is probably still going to feature quite a lot. Sort of the plan is to play the more experienced players in the, the bigger games, the games like Marseille, Lyon, PSG. And then against sort of the weaker teams, we will go with players like Cedric Horn at right back. We will go with players like uh, Parmentia at Segundo Volante and maybe swap around some of our wingers as well. Just try and get our younger players a bit of experience, because especially like Cedric Horn, I just think he looks like he's going to develop into something really, really good. And to be, well, to have those stats at only 16 years old, he looks very impressive. And, well, again, he's very young. He could potentially be another long-serving player to replace a long-serving player in Rafa Navarro, who still looks solid, but certainly is declining with age. So... It's a bit sort of, there's going to be a lot of chopping and changing, I think, as the season goes on, but we really do need to fight for every single point. So I think having options and being able to rotate is very important. So just to sort of run through the first team, we've got my Sonny or Navarro, uh, Zacharias Antonio, Follett, Nasruddin, Parmentier, Bordas, Mbwemo, Marietti, Asse, and Noe Stefan is kind of what I'm looking at. But again, the first game, you'll see Parmentier is injured, Follett is suspended. Parmentia, by the way, it says he's injured. He looks fine, but I don't know. Um, I don't quite know what the plan is there. But yeah, and then we've got... I'll just You can just look at the bench. You know most of these players. You can't look at the bench because that moved the screen off. There we go. But yeah, you're, you're familiar with a lot of these players. Thomas Eriksson's still knocking around. He is still at the club. We'll definitely play a game or two, especially in the cup, because it's Thomas Eriksson. Why wouldn't I? But, well, that's pretty much it for the team. The tactics are... Essentially similar to what we sort of played in our first season at Troy's when we took over at the back end. Um, I'm trying to kind of just get a similar thing going, but just with better players and kind of get players playing the way they were then. For example, Mbwemo moving back out onto the right where he was a lot more eff effective than the season before. And, well, just try and see what we can get going with this. And I'm quite optimistic. I don't know. I really don't know because it's such a step up in quality. Like, I don't think... Even when we've gotten promoted before, it's never been this huge of a leap. And when we go to our schedule, you'll see why. So our first three games, Marseille, Saint-Étienne and PSG. Welcome to the league. Uh, yeah, it's not going to be easy, that's for sure. And, well, I think we may be in for a couple of batterings quite early on. But 
if we can sort of come through this period, there's a couple of easier teams coming up. I mean, Dijon certainly aren't on the level of those other teams. Cayenne maybe as well, although they're a lot better than us. Oh, they, they're very good. Okay, they've got Memphis Depay. Okay, yeah, they are a lot better than us. Uh, Mets maybe obviously got promoted along with us. They obviously came up through the playoffs, or did they get the automatic? Um, I'm not quite... Oh, Lorient and Mets are the two teams that came up with us, so Nancy actually missed out, and Amiens. Unfortunate for them, but yeah, Havre, again, another team which I would expect us to at least be able to put up a fight against. We have teams in here I think that we can beat, but staying up is not going to be easy. Um, well, if we just take a look at this, I mean, our, our aim is to avoid relegation, and I don't know whether or not we're going to be able to do it. I'm going to be completely honest. A couple of games have already been played, Monaco picking up an early defeat. But it does appear as though 18th is just a relegation playoff. So we could potentially finish 18th and still stay up, but it's well, it's not going to be clear cut either way, to be honest. It's going to be a really difficult season, and I think we've strengthened just enough to do it. I'm, I'm really not sure. It's, we're not going to know until we know, but, well, I guess the, the other thing to touch on while we're here is the preseason, where we've done fairly well, picked up three wins and one defeat, although we really didn't play anyone as note. Uh, I didn't do the friendlies myself this time. I let my assistant arrange them and everything, and they just weren't as good. Um, regretting that, because we missed out on a lot of money by only playing four friendlies, as opposed to, like, the 20-odd we played the season before. But, well, at least we, we've we sort of come into this on a bit of a bit of run of form, you know, eight goals scored and three, or two conceded in our, sort of, last three games. It's not terrible. It's not a bad way to come into the start of the season. And since we did just briefly touch on finances, we are finally in the positive of our overall balance by 70,000. It's not a massive positive, but it is a positive, and it will definitely drift away in about a week when we pay everyone's wages, but at least we're sort of showing that we can get up there, and obviously we will get some TV money for the season, which is obviously going to be quite a big boost, but hopefully we can start to pull it in a positive dire direction, especially with the promotion. Should be a massive factor towards that, you would hope at the very least, and I think we're essentially done in the transfer window as well, so there really shouldn't be any more outgoings there unless... I might make maybe a couple more signings. I really don't know. I've not got any planned, but if someone really catches my eye, I'm obviously not going to hesitate to bring them in. But I think that about wraps up sort of the squad. Actually, before we do, let's take a look at a couple of the top teams. What are PSG doing? Leon Bailly, Ruven Neves, Jao Felix, Ravio is still there, Marquinhos still there, uh, Alex Murray, Amaric Laporte, some very good players, Alex Grimaldo. Yeah, some very good players knocking around there, along with obviously a couple of regens at this point in the game, like this guy, who looks very good. Uh, anyone else who I don't recognise the name? Oh, no, he is. I should have I known by the age, really. Uh, Maladon Priest. Yeah, he's a regen. Okay, they're good. PSG are good. I don't think that really took any saying, but yeah, they are. Marseille, our first opponents. Oh, that's a lot of players over sort of the 40 million mark. Um... Yeah, their entire squad individually is pretty much valued at more than our entire club. Well, it's not going to be an easy season. Let's let's just face facts. Who's their best player? Um, an attacking midfielder who, well, yeah, just look at all the dark blue. I mean, he's he's great. Let's we're going to get hit very hard by some teams in this league. It's just a case of trying to beat the teams that are sort of beatable, I guess, and just well. A try and scrap our way to not being relegated. I certainly think there's teams in here that could potentially finish below us, teams like Mets, teams like um, Lorient, teams like Havre, who we may be able to put up a little bit of a fight against and hopefully try and send them down instead of us. 40 points is sort of the goal, as is usual, in 20-team 20, 20 leagues. Whether or not we'll be able to reach that, I have absolutely no idea at all. It's... It's going to be difficult, but currently we are very secure in our job security, so, well, if anything goes wrong, we may have a little bit of time, that's about the most we have going for us, really, because it's going to be, even though I do feel like we strengthened our team, I don't think it was ever going to be easy, you know, even if we'd have managed to keep Gregory Berger and all of that stuff, I really don't think this would ever have been an easy season, because it's just such a big step up, and some of the teams in here are just absolute titans compared to us, like, PSG for example, who are just going to beat us a lot. If we pull out a result against PSG, that'll be equivalent of, like, winning the league, in my mind. Like, that would just be insane. But, 
I think that about wraps this up. So obviously, with this being the introduction, there's going to be two videos going up today. There'll be this, and then following this, there'll be the first two games of the season, which goes up at 15 minutes later at quad six. Um, that's just the standard thing we do when it's the start of a new season. So let me know what you think. Let me know what you think of our squad, how our chances are going to be. I mean, it's just not going to be easy. One thing I didn't actually note, note by the way, but I do want to point this out. If Can we go to the transfer history for the league? Because... PSG basically made a load of money. They basically sold 200 million worth of players, which is absolutely insane. And I kind of think this needs to be seen. Where is it? Transfer window? Is it here? Yes, it is. PSG, they've sold two players. Uh, can we pull this up? Is it over here? Yeah, so they sold a player for 121 mil to Liverpool and a player for 125 mil to Man City. They also let Jeffrey Condogbia go on a free, which basically says everything we need to know about them, because he's a very good player. Um, yeah, they signed a player for 62 million and managed to make more money than we've ever seen in our lives. So, um, I'm a little bit scared, I'm not going to lie, but let's have a bit of faith. Let's see what we can do. Yeah, so let me know what you think of our team, of our chances, of everything like that in the comments below. And we will look to get started on this right now. So the next two games will probably be up by the end of this video. So if not, it will be quarter to six. But thank you very much for watching. Again, let me know any feedback in the comments below. Join the Discord, follow me on Twitter. Links to both of those in the description to keep you updated on the series. We may have some double upload days coming up. I'm not quite sure. It depends how far ahead I get recorded. But yeah, again, follow those and you'll know when they're coming. So thank you very much for watching. I will catch you all tomorrow. Have a... Oh no, I'll catch you all in like 10 minutes. But yeah, have a, have a wonderful watch of the next video. I don't know where I was going with that. I'll catch you all there. Goodbye.